What could be said about Michael Jordan that has not already been said? Multiple time MVP, multiple time champion, and is the second greatest basketball player of all time, only behind the other obvious choice, Brian Scalabrini. And with such success and fame comes Michael Jordan branded video games. That rhymed. And let me tell you, some of these are some of the weirdest games you could possibly play. Starting off with Jordan vs. Bird one-on-one. -on -one. This NES game is, well, an NES game. The players look like they're curling invisible weights when they run, and I'm pretty sure these portraits rival my sleep paralysis demon in terms of creepy factor. <laughs> But like I said, it's an NES game. You pick between Michael Jordan or Larry Bird and you play one-on-one -on -one basketball, so you get everything that the title advertises. Everything here works and it's not anything offensive or anything memorable, except this. This must be that hard-nosed 1990s defense that I keep hearing old heads talk about. You can select between Jordan or Bird, and man, they must have had Uncle Ruckus program this game, because I'm over here building houses with Jordan, while Larry Bird can drain almost any shot, even the furthest away you can possibly shoot. This is number one bullshit. Jordan can dunk, but who cares? This is not like NBA Street where there's style points that lead to something. So Larry Bird is pretty much the odd job of this game. If you pick him, you're probably an asshole. Before this, there was Dr. J versus Bird, and he was probably overpowered there too. Larry Bird versus Dr. J. Larry Bird versus Michael Jordan. Larry Bird versus the Predator. Bird wins them all. The game attempts a realistic style of basketball with fouls and more down-to-earth gameplay, and it works for the time. Besides one-on-one, -on -one, there are other game modes, like a dunk contest. You select from a list of dunks and you have to use time button presses to complete them. Is this possible? Sure, but it's still hard as hell to do. However, it was pretty good at the time. And there's this three-point contest with Bird, which is self-explanatory. One little unique thing that you can do is skip a rack and have free movement to any rack you want. I don't think there's any other three-point contest in any other game that allows this. Overall, Jordan vs. Bird is fine for the time. There are several versions of this game, most notably the Sega Genesis version, which doesn't get a pass because it's mostly the same game with just updated graphics. Moving on to DOS, we have the second weirdest basketball-related game I've ever played. Michael Jordan in Flight is a game starring Michael Jordan with no NBA teams. Jordan owned the right to his name and likeness, so he wasn't a part of the NBA PA. If you had to make a Michael Jordan game, you had to deal directly with the man himself. And it appears they blew all of their budget on securing Jordan's likeness because the actual game is bad. You can only control Jordan himself, and you're playing in this endless black void where nothing exists except basketball. Like seriously, I wonder if this is the same realm where the GameCube console menu is at. In space, no one can hear you scream, but they can hear the basketball bouncing. That shit transcends space and time. This, the net, the rim when you miss a shot, and the crowd, which sounds like the ocean. These are the only sounds during gameplay. Controlling the game is the biggest problem. You don't move around with the keys, you guide Jordan with the mouse, and this just makes you cha-cha slide all over the place, with no hope of stopping, especially since the camera always follows the ball and is constantly moving itself. It's hard to play defense when it looks like I'm a damn dog with the zoomies. The game has all of these options like running plays, subbing in and out players and whatnot, but it's not really worth it because the base game is so bad. Even a presentation is nothing special. Watch what happens when you make a three-pointer. You mean to tell me you couldn't edit in a soundbite of Jordan saying anything? You can't throw in any audio at all? Look, I can even make it better myself.
Baba Bowie. There's a tournament mode here, and that's really it. I give the game props for attempting a 3D game, but it's probably the worst basketball game you can seek out and play. Much like the void the players are in, the game is empty. Maybe I'm too harsh. The only other review I can find of this game is from an old magazine archive that states the game has photorealistic graphics. Man, it's like I can't tell which is the game and which is real life. Somebody help me out there. So do you remember when I said the last game was the second weirdest basketball game ever? Well, here's the first. Michael Jordan Chaos in the Windy City is not even a basketball game. Yes, you control Jordan. Yes, he's dribbling a basketball. Yes, he can dunk. But like, this is a platformer where you do all those things. So the story starts out the evil mad scientist Maximus Cranium kidnapped Jordan's teammates and instead of calling law enforcement, Jordan decides to take matters into his own hands and save his teammates and defeat the evil mastermind all while never traveling. Once you get over the insane Shaq Fu-esque theme of the game, you'd find a solid game here. The game is non-linear. Instead of heading to the right of the screen to reach the end, you have to search these big levels to look through doors and dunk basketballs to get items like keys, which then lead to you opening doors to find your teammates. There are hordes of monsters to stop you. How do you defeat them? Guns? No. Blades? No. Magic? No. If you'd guess basketballs, you have problems but you're also correct in this instance. Jordan just chucks these basketballs at enemies until they die. There are many different basketballs to use as weapons. Flaming basketballs, ice basketballs, basketball baseballs. I guess the movie Basketball was ahead of its time. I thought a decent portion of these were worthless until I discovered that throwing them on the ground causes different effects like these golden balls break apart into many different smaller balls. Geez, the amount of times I said Michael Jordan or basketball in this video is truly astonishing. Well anyway, this game is pretty damn hard. It's pretty generous with the Gatorade and Wheaties to refill your health. Even then, I'm still struggling here. Part of this has to do with some control issues. This weird delay with controls that makes everything harder than it needs to be, especially when you have to be super precise with this platforming. Also, trying to grab these little zip lines just makes it look like I have an answer to a question in school. I'd say give this a play. It's pretty familiar though. If I had a nickel for every game from the fourth console generation that stars a famous celebrity with the initials MJ going through non-linear platforming levels where you fight hordes of monsters and open countless amounts of doors to save kidnapped victims, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. This game, we're welcome to the jam with Space Jam. The PS1 basketball game, not the Xbox game that's a beat em up and doesn't even have Jordan. Oh no. Of course, the worst notable publisher in the video game space is behind this. Maybe this is one of those hidden gem kind of games. You know, like, nah, this game just sucks ass, just like 95% of other acclaimed games. Poetry in motion. Take a seat. This is another game that doesn't have any NBA teams in it. Instead, you face off against the Monstars with the Looney Tunes as your teammates, much like you do in a movie. Yeah, trust me, I sympathize with you, Daffy. Is it crazy for me to say that this is the closest to a normal team-based game of basketball so far? The gameplay is just baby's first NBA Jam. You push ball carriers and dunk basketballs without any real flair that the NBA Jam games have outside of some underwhelming dunks. I hope Lola saw that. The gameplay is so shallow. They add in these little mini games in between quarters or before the game even starts. Some of this is from the movie, like Daffy running around Jordan's house collecting his uniform and Bugs in the locker room looking for Jordan's gambling tickets. I, I mean, secret stuff. But then you have some random stuff like the spaceship race game where you have to outrun your opponent until they're off the screen, which can be hard to do because you can't see what's in front of you. This game is the worst kind of bad. Boring bad. You have a standard exhibition mode, then you have an intergalactic tournament where you play in a tournament 
which you would think you would face off against some other teams or players, but nope, you just play against the Monstars over and over and over again. And after you play the same game five times, all you get for your efforts is this little cutscene in the end. And that's the game, really. I can't believe this was a full priced game. Jordan vs. Bird had more content than this. Despite this being a Space Jam movie game, there's no plot or anything outside of just basketball and the little mini games that relate to the actual movie. You couldn't even do one of those little cheapo comic book art cutscenes that scream low budget. Unfortunately, Space Jam just sucks. And it doesn't even have Newman or Dan Aykroyd in it. After NBA Street Volume 2 in 2003, we would have a Jordan drought in terms of him appearing in NBA video games. From NBA Live to NBA Shootout to NBA Ballage, we would get zero appearances from Michael Jordan. We would go almost a decade of no Jordan in games until 2010 where it would be announced that 2K inked a deal with Jordan to appear and essentially be the spokesperson for NBA 2K11. Now you can debate me on if NBA 2K11 is a Jordan game or not. You can essentially play thousands of hours of this game and not run into Jordan once. But hey, he's on the cover, he has his own game mode, and the whole theme and aesthetic of the game is based off of him. Hell, when you first start the game, Jordan channels his inner Triple H slash Chris Angel slash Zoe 101 by saying, which according to this random YouTube comment, may be the first person to actually speak in a 2K basketball game. No clue if that's true or not, but it's cooler to just believe it, so I'll do just that. So I'm just gonna talk about the Jordan mode as opposed to the entirety of NBA 2K11 itself. The Jordan challenge mode has you relive important moments in Michael Jordan's career. You have to complete a set number of objectives in a game in order to win. Each scenario you're dropped in is cool because the presentation changes. You get a grainy effect on the game and a commentator's reference what's going on at the time. The Bulls will be looking for Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen to lead them to their sixth championship in the last eight years. Mark a truly remarkable run if they can finish here. And Kevin, the Bulls do want to finish it right here. They want to avoid a game seven. You even have players who really played with and against Jordan at the time. NBA 2K11 itself is a damn good basketball game, so by default, this is going to be a good game mode. It's fun, with the only issue I have being it's quite time consuming in a sense that you have to play four eight minute quarters. You have to spend almost an hour playing a game, and if you fail, you pretty much wasted all your time and you have to try again for like another hour. After completing the game, you get to use Jordan instead of a custom character in my career. This is probably everyone's favorite game mode from 2K Basketball and most definitely the best thing I've covered in this video. 2K would go on to have similar modes to this in future games. 2K12 was more of a celebration of the history of the NBA so we got historic challenges while 2K14 is centered on LeBron James. The one answer I have is that we're gonna come strong tonight. Hey yo! None of which ever hit the same like Jordan Challenge did. And that would be it for Jordan games. Kinda. I'll briefly mention NBA 2K23, which has its own Jordan mode where you do much of the exact same, except it has more challenges and even goes far back as Jordan's college days. I'm just briefly mentioning 2K23 because I don't consider it a Jordan game. He's not on the cover of the regular edition and the game isn't centered around him like 2K11 was. It's still worth mentioning though. And those are all the Jordan games. The worst one is a toss up between Michael Jordan in flight and Space Jam. I'll just say In Flight is worse because it has some nostalgic feelings towards a Space Jam game. Then after those two, I'd say Jordan vs. Bird because it's not bad, but not really anything memorable, especially by today's standards. Next would be Chaos in the Windy City, which is surprisingly decent. And the best one would be 2K11, to no one's real surprise. There's actually one more Jordan game, but it's rated adult only and I can't show those on YouTube.